Welcome to Battleground Politics. I'm Lauren Make. NBC's Meet the Press is now moderated by a Philadelphia native. Kristen Welker was a reporter here at NBC10 before joining NBC News. She was in town recently and stopped by our studios, and we sat down to talk about her Philly roots, the show, and politics in Pennsylvania. Kristen, it is so great to have you back in Philadelphia and taking some time to spend with us. Thank you so much. Lauren, it's such an honor to be with you, and I am in awe of all of your political coverage, so thanks for having me. A and we as yours as well. <laughs> um, well, let's talk about what is new for you, what is new for NBC as well, with you as the new moderator for Meet the Press. Tell me about what that was like to take those reins. What was that first show like? The first show was something that we worked incredibly hard on. I mean, I started working on the first show from the moment that it was announced that I would be taking over. And we wanted to make sure that as we do every Sunday, we are questioning people who are having an impact on our politics, our political discourse, and of course, former President Trump, who was the first guest, is one of the people who's at the top of that list. So. Certainly, there was a lot of thought and preparation that went into that interview. And one of the things that I think will be a hallmark, hopefully, of this new chapter for me at the press is to really give interviews time to breathe, to give the people that we're interviewing time to really express what their views are, what their policy perspectives are, so that the viewers and the voters can get a really full sense of their politicians as we hold them to account, as we hold their feet to the fire. Yeah, that's a great point because sometimes those follow-up questions are the most important mm -hmm. ones. Absolutely, there's no doubt about that. I mean, it, it's all about the follow-up, it's all about the preparation. And I think taking the reins, I mean, Chuck, who is my mentor, has always said that the role of the moderator of Meet the Press is really to bring Washington to the people all across this country and vice versa. And so. That's what we tried to do in that first show. That's what I'm going to try to do in every show moving forward. But it's an incredible honor and it's an incredible responsibility, Lauren. I mean, we are entering this critical moment in our politics, the 2024 campaign season. And so every Sunday, I feel a huge responsibility to make sure that we are asking our elected officials and those who are seeking higher office the top questions that are on the mind of voters and our viewers sitting at home. The media landscape has changed so much yeah. uh, over the years and in recent years especially. How do you see Meet the Press fitting into that in, in this sort of new reality that we all live in? You're absolutely right. I mean, social media has made this a 24-7 mm -hmm. environment. And so I think it's important that on Sundays we're constantly staying ahead of the curve, pushing the story forward. And I also think it's important, and, and when I talk about the responsibility of Meet the Press, I want to make sure that we are hearing from a diverse set of voices from all across our political spectrum, that we're hearing from voters, that the opinions of voters are top of mind for me so that I'm asking the questions that they want answers to. And I also want to highlight people who aren't necessarily elected officials, but who are having an impact on our political discourse. So I really want Sundays to be a place where our viewers can come and learn about the top issues that they've been thinking about all week long and learn something new about each of those issues. Yeah, I think that's something that we all strive for also in terms of finding those voices mm. and, and figuring out really whose voices are going to change things. Mm -hmm. As we look ahead to 2024, um, whose voices, I'm not just necessarily talking individuals, but you know, who, whose voices do you think are really gonna help shape what happens? That's a really good question. Well, in terms of who we will want to talk to, I mean, we want to talk to everyone. We want to talk to all of the candidates. We, of course, um, want to talk to the people who are in office right now. We want to talk to the folks on Capitol Hill. As you know, we are coming off of this week of discord, the, this historic week where the Speaker of the House um, lost his gavel for the first time in U.S. history. So to really get a sense of these divisions within our politics. But again, the people who are front and center are the voters. And so I'm gonna be out talking to voters as well. It's not just about talking to elected officials because at the end of the day, it's about getting voters the information that they need and that they want so that they can make informed decisions. Yeah, you mentioned what happened on Capitol mm -hmm. Hill. Just, uh, you know, as we sit here, it happened last night. I know some people will be watching this a little bit later, uh, but, People look mm. at that and they see chaos. 
um, happening in, in Washington. We don't know what's going to happen next, exactly how this is going to play out. What does all of it mean for the way Washington functions? Because ultimately that does matter in terms of getting things done. Absolutely. And when you look at our polling, you see the frustration that people have with Washington. And this week, you have to imagine only compounds that where literally the House of Representatives is in a state of paralysis right now. They do not have a speaker. They're not going to try to elect a speaker until this next week. And so no business can get done. And by the way, the government stands the risk of shutting down in another 40 days. And you have a small group of hardline Republicans who are digging in on their demands of deep spending cuts. But what it says more broadly is there are deep divisions within the Republican Party. Um, we see that on Capitol Hill. I hear about that on the campaign trail. And so I think that that is one of the key stories as we enter 2024. You have this primary race to um, knock out former President Donald Trump, who's leading by, depending on which poll you look at, um, anywhere from 40 to more points. And that, they're that all double a, digits. They're all double digits. Yeah. And that's nationwide, but that's also when you look in the early voting states. So um, this is someone who has been indicted four times, and um, you're seeing the divisions play out around him as a candidate um, within the halls of Congress. And I do think it's one of the biggest stories that we will cover as political reporters heading into 2024. Yeah, one of the things that strikes me at this moment is how close so many things are divided. Yes. Uh, the Senate is closely divided. The House is closely mm -hmm. divided. Uh, in Pennsylvania, the House is closely divided as well. In Michigan, uh, the legislature is closely divided. What, is, what does that tell you about sort of where we are to have all of these sort of razor thin margins and then people trying to govern? It's such a great question. I mean, look at our latest NBC News poll, which shows former President Trump and President Biden literally in a dead heat at 46 percent each. That is a snapshot of where the country is. As you say, we see it here in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, elsewhere. And we are just living in a deeply divided moment. And that is why I think that we have such huge responsibilities as political reporters to make sure that we're getting it right, to make sure that we're getting critical information to the voters because this election, this presidential election and all of the congressional races will be decided on the margins. And it goes back to something that we spend a lot of time talking about as political reporters, which is enthusiasm. Yeah. Are people energized to get out and vote for the candidates of their choosing? Of course, 2020 was not decided in one day and I would be surprised if 2024 is as well. We know in Pennsylvania that um, this is an important state, and I'm curious how yeah. it's viewed um, from Washington and, and, and elsewhere. Um, does everyone consider it gettable in 2024? Um. I, everyone considers it a major battleground state. <laughs> Let, let's say, let's put it that way. I mean, that is why you're seeing President Biden, who spends so much time here, and of course, um, this is, you know, his home. But it, it is one of the most important states and obviously, it's a state that former President Trump was able to flip back in 2016, which sent him to the White House. Uh, and then he lost it when President Biden won it back in 2020. And I think that um, it underscores the importance of this great state, my hometown, as well. And of course, you have to think about the Pennsylvania suburbs. When I was here in 2008 as a local reporter covering the presidential race in that cycle, we spent so much time focused on the Philadelphia suburbs and the fact that we saw them sw switch from red to blue. And that helped propel uh, former President Barack Obama to the White House. And I think the Philadelphia suburbs are just as important uh, in this election cycle as they always are. And of course, the turnout in Philadelphia as well. And they are an even an even deeper blue yeah. and, and have in some cases made up for um, sometimes when Philadelphia maybe didn't turn out right. quite as much, but but the suburbs did. And you mentioned um, your hometown here in Philadelphia. And I also wonder how that helps you where you are today, because there's really, uh, we all, as we, as reporters move around the country, learn states. Yeah. Um, I've learned Florida. I've, you know, I've learned Pennsylvania. <laughs> Florida, Florida, Florida. I grew up in Michigan. There is yeah. nothing like having sort of experienced that mm -hmm. over decades and living there and growing up there and to have grown up in such an important state as Pennsylvania. Yeah. 
How does that, how do you bring that with you to your, your reporting and, and how does that help you to, to understand what's going on? Well, in a lot of ways, politics is just in my blood. I mean, my mom ran for city council when I was growing up and my parents were always engaged in politics. My uncle was the city commissioner when I was a kid. And so I've always been fascinated by politics and by the reporters who cover politicians. And I remember the political coverage of my mom when she was running and I thought some of it was unfair and too harsh, but I gained a real appreciation for the importance of getting it right as a political reporter and the importance of that in our democracy. And in so many ways, obviously, Philadelphia is the birthplace of our democracy. So I think growing up here because of my family and just because of what Philadelphia represents, it is just something that's always been in my blood. And when I looked back at the years that you were here, because we didn't yeah. overlap. Unfortunately, uh, I know. <laughs> I see you so much on the campaign trail. We, I feel yes. like we did overlap it, in some it's ways. True. It's true, it's true. And we have a lot of yeah. colleagues and friends in common. Um, but you covered um, some of the people here in the Philadelphia area that we are still talking about today on a national stage, which is just amazing. When you think about when you were here, uh, President Biden was a senator mm -hmm. in Delaware and then vice president. So tell me about covering him back then. Well, I remember being camped out outside of his house in Delaware, waiting to see if he was, in fact, going to be um, then candidate Obama, then Senator Obama's pick for a vice presidential nominee. And so I spent hours and days camped outside of his house. And it was a massive story. And of course, I was a local reporter at the time, but all of the correspondents from the network were here. And it was bustling. And it was so exciting to witness that and to witness um, that moment. And so, you know, I think that... Uh, President Biden certainly is a part of the fabric of this area. Um, and that time in my career when I was covering local politics is one that I will always just treasure. I mean, I covered some of the most exciting races. I covered when Senator Casey beat Rick Santorum. I was at Santorum's headquarters, and I'll never forget that night that he lost, and we didn't know, you know, which way the race was going to go. I was there when then Mayor Nutter won his first term. Um, and, and what was exciting about covering that race, if you recall, when then candidate Nutter got into the race, he was trailing in the polls, mm -hmm. and he came from behind. One of the greatest political come from behind stories, um, certainly that I've ever covered and been a part of. And it, those moments, I think, are exciting. They're exciting stories to tell. But again, um, as a reporter, you just have a huge responsibility. And I learned so much about political reporting here in Philadelphia. I learned how to be scrappy. I learned how to <laughs> ask tough questions. And I it's learned necessary how to, sometimes, It's very right? necessary. Yeah. And I learned how to make sure I was getting answers to the questions that I was asking. So. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Senator Casey. He's, of yes, course, running right. again in uh, in 2024 for re-election. Republicans really want that seat. And it, it appears that in Pennsylvania this time, unlike in 2022, they are um, uniting behind Dave McCormick. The state party has already endorsed him a year out. That did not happen last time. There was a fierce primary fight, you remember. Um, what did you learn sort of during that time covering those early days uh, of Bob Casey's uh, Senate career that uh, you'll kind of use as you put things into perspective now? Well, I think it goes back to what we were talking about, Lauren, which is the coalition that he built. Mm -hmm. His ability to energize um, and rally voters in the Philadelphia suburbs, um, in the Pittsburgh area, and to really harness that momentum to unseat um, Rick Santorum at the time. And so I think that's going to be the big question, you know, and, and as you say, um, people are rallied around Dave McCormick. And so he it's going to be a tough fight, I think. And of course, he had an unsuccessful bid um, for Senate in this last cycle. So can he be a comeback kid? It's going to be potentially expensive. Yes. Uh, he certainly has a different um, he, you talked about coalitions. He, yeah, I was at an event uh, recently. He had five, five county party chairs mm. there. So uh, you can see people rallying, rallying behind him. But that, you know, as you talk to people in Washington, is that Pennsylvania Senate race something that they, they've got their finger on? Oh, their eye on? absolutely. I think you are going to expect to see the Republican Party pour a lot of money into that seat. It's one of the seats that they're eyeing. It's potentially one that could flip. There's no doubt. 
And um, I, that's going to be the name of the game because you talk about the margins and the narrow margin in the Senate and Republicans want to win it back. And, and this kind of goes back to where we started this part of the conversation, which is that the discord that we're seeing in Washington, the concern among Republicans that I'm talking to, could it have an impact on the Senate race here in Pennsylvania and races all across the country? If you look at our polling, it shows actually that the GOP gets very high marks for its handling of things like the economy, crime, which is a big issue here. But when voters look at the discord in Washington, do they start to hold the Republican Party responsible across the board? And uh, as you and I have talked about, who is, who is really going to show up right. when it comes to Election Day? Um, who can turn out their voters? Uh, will there be voters in Pennsylvania who maybe turned out last time mm. for Joe Biden who just might not turn out this time? And you see that enthusiasm gap already, not just in the numbers, but I've been out on the campaign trail um, in some of the early voting states, Iowa, for example, um, where voters are saying, look, we don't love our choices. We're not sure what we're going to do in this election cycle. So there's not the same enthusiasm. Will that change as we get closer to Election Day? I think it could. I think it's still very early, so it's too soon to tell. But I think if you look at, particularly you mentioned President Biden, um, his support has dipped in some really key groups who helped him win in 2020, African Americans, younger voters. Um, and, and so that's a warning sign. That's a red blinking light if you are the president and his campaign. It, certainly he's been looking to shore up certain things. He was here on yes. Labor Day. Yes. Um, and we know union support, labor support, um, a big one for him. Certainly he went to Michigan. Uh, as well. He, he's going to be in this state a lot. So yeah. my advice for all of you, <laughs> get ready because you are going to be busy, not just covering the Senate race, but I think that um, President Biden and whoever wins the GOP nomination will be in Pennsylvania a lot. Yeah. We'll be covering it. You'll be covering it. And, and before we wrap up, I also wanted to ask you about something you talked about as you took over as moderator of Meet the Press. And you talked about the women who yeah. have paved the way for you, for me, uh, for all yeah. of us. Uh, tell me, tell me how, that, how that is important to you and how mm. you think about that. Well, I've been so fortunate to have mentors like Andrea Mitchell, like Savannah Guthrie, who, frankly, when I arrived at NBC, reached out to me and spent time on the phone with me, helped me to improve my political reporting. They really made sure I didn't fail. The late Gwen Eiffel, who didn't work at NBC at the time, she of course worked at PBS, she made time to take me to dinner. And they are such role models for me, not just because they have set the gold standard, but because they reached out and said, we want to help you. So my goal in life is to model myself after them and to reach out to the next generation. You are doing that every Sunday. Oh, thank you, Lauren. Kristen, thank you so much for your time. We love having you back in Philadelphia. I'm sure we'll be seeing quite a bit of you in Pennsylvania. I love being here. There is truly no place like home. So thanks for having me, Lauren. Absolutely. To find more battleground politics, you can go to our website. It's NBC10.com slash battleground politics. You can also find episodes on our YouTube channel and wherever you get your podcasts.